and I'm about to get in somebody's business today. Why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself to to the people of Let's Talk About It. <laughs> Yo, what's going on, y'all? My name is Clear J Official. Anybody out there that don't know me, you know what I'm saying? Decatur Bread, you know, Atlanta, Georgia. I don't care what they talking about on the internet. Decatur is Atlanta. <laughs> Can we talk about that? Like, we gonna talk about that. Like, we, since you from Georgia, we gonna talk about that song later. I want to hear your opinion. Right, right. So tell us, like, tell us about yourself. Tell us, you know, about, I know you make music, but I also know you do other things too. Well, yeah, for the most part, you know, um, started off as a rapper. Been rapping ever since I was like eight. And um, I started off rapping and everything. It, it was just like as a hobby, just something to do, something to kind of relieve a little bit of stress. Cause you know, uh, being bullied a lot when I was little, I'm a cousin and stuff like that. So I decided to hit Mike, come up with, you know, some rhymes directed to him. <laughs> and then um, I actually started to make it a more of a career thing. You know what I'm saying? When I got my homeboy Mark in Alabama, you know what I'm saying? Big shout out to Mark. Um, he started making beats for me and stuff like that. And I started uh, like recording a little bit of songs and stuff like that over. And then it kind of just blossomed from there. We started a record label when I was like 10 years old. He was 12. Uh, we actually got the license for it and all this stuff. And you know what I'm saying? Just started putting the music out there on the streets and you know, letting the people know what's up. A um, little bit after that, I just kind of ventured into like blogging. Because, you know, I, of course, I like words. I like writing. So I said, okay, well, let me uh, fix up a blog because I want to be able to get my music out there as well as promote other independent artists. So I came up with a blog uh, called Mike Hudson. Um, MikeHudson.com was the, uh, the uh, URL for it, I guess you'd say. And, um, you know, we did pretty good. Made pretty good numbers off of that. So, you know, I, I was successful as an independent artist with my music and I help other independent artists and singers and models and stuff like that become successful as well so I'm, I'm real proud of that uh, you know it, it's, a, it's a lot of other stuff I do I'll be here all day kind of trying to discuss everything though <laughs> well, let's talk about it that's what we're here for so <laughs> let's start with the music per se when you um, got into the industry like what struggles or what what was the downside that you experienced while you were you know coming up doing start like just starting music wise well i mean for the most part well re rephrase the question again because i kind of got what you said but not exactly was there anything while you were going through because you mentioned starting a record label you mentioned helping other artists what were some of like for people who are just starting to do this like what were some of the things that you went through and you got through it oh yeah so like for the most part i think my biggest struggle at the time because like when i first started my record label or whatever, uh, when i was younger my biggest struggle was trying to keep everything in-house so you know, you had you had to learn how to mix. You had to learn how to master. You know what I'm saying? You had to get used to your voice. Learn learn your voice on the, the microphone and stuff like that to know how to project. Uh, you know, you had to make your own beats. Cause we made our own beats and stuff like that. Me and my homeboy, Mark, and a couple other people that we had with us. You know, everybody in the camp made their own beats. Um, I had to learn how to manufacture my own CDs my own uh, tapes and stuff like that. I had to learn how to uh, push it into the stores, you know, at, at, at that particular time because, you know, it, it wasn't no, no Spotify, no Pandora or nothing like that to really put your music out there. So I had to learn how to get in touch with the stores, talk to the, the store owners and, you know what I'm saying, the, the coordinators and stuff like that to be able to get my CDs into the stores and get get the sales so like that. I had to learn about marketing and promoting all that different type of stuff just to you know really push everything forward so the biggest challenge was just just learning all of this stuff in such a short time 
because you talking about I started this when I was uh, 10 years old, the record label when I was 10 years old. By 18, you know what I'm saying, we had done made like a total out of all them years, a total of like $60,000. And then one year we made like 30000 So big, that was like the biggest thing I had to face and the biggest ordeal I had to go through is learning how to be independent even back then. You talking about this, this had to be around uh, 2003, 2004. We was kicking it like this. So, well, uh, you know, the people today press a button, it upload. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you, right. You, you get in change. touch with a few people, and you know what I'm saying? It's out there. You feel me? So, how did you, how did the change from, like you mentioned, having to talk to store owners and having to really do, like, really the hard work pushing your, you know, your music? Versus, like you mentioned, you just press a button, and if you post something at the right time, you know you can go viral. So, how did that affect your business? Well, um, for the most part, it, it was just a learning curve. It was a learning curve that I had to, you know, kind of uh, maculate to, because at first it was, it was like, okay, so how do you do this? <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, kind of like, okay, so so. If I, if I upload, you know what I'm saying, I'm not just going to pop just like that. You know what I'm saying? So I got I got to learn the times of upload. I got to learn, you know what I'm saying, when people are actually online and when people are watching. I got to learn, like, exactly what they like so I could at least try to catch it. You see what I'm saying? And, and, and then I got I to gotta kind of word stuff a certain way to get people attention and, and gravitate people to a particular post or a particular you know, um, particular uh, video or something like that. So it was just, it was just like a big learning curve, and um, you know, I'm still kind of learning in the process because it's, it's people out here who, I mean, they they do this stuff religiously, and I mean, they dangerous with it. So I'm just, I'm trying to get like them, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I definitely get it. I'm still I'm from the I'm right before the era of social media, so like I right. get it. Um, I could imagine you mentioned having to learn how to basically do everything on your own. Mm-hmm. So I'm sure that took a lot of time out of your days, your weeks, months, years. How did coming up doing music or putting in all that work affect your personal life? Um, I kind of I kind of worked it into my personal life as, as much as I could because um. You know, of course, uh, you, know, you, you got family, you got uh, spouses, and you know, different people that you mess with, stuff like that, that might not agree with you being out late nights in the studio or you, you know what I'm saying, going to different shows and being around certain people, you know, or you, you just steadily writing all the time and trying to come up with new stuff. So it, it, it was kind of a strain, and, and you know, with some people. But for the most part, I had like the utmost support, the utmost respect from people around me because they understood that, you know what I'm saying, my love for music was way before them. See what I'm saying? Like, I'm talking about I'm two years old singing, you know what I'm saying, on tape for my pop. You know, my uh, my pop, he was a, a soul singer. You know what I'm saying? Ran around with, with Johnny Taylor and, and Ebo Bryson and uh, Fred Jackson, people like that. You know, my granddad, he wrote for Atlantic. So, you know what I'm saying? My 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 musical. You grew up in the music right industry, pretty so much. Again, so you would would you say you pretty much grew up in the industry? Right, like like I grew up around this. Mm-hmm. So if 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 you are with me and you know me, you know what I'm saying? Then you already know I come with this. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, a lot a lot of people couldn't handle it, but I got the right people around me that can handle it. So, you know, we working together and we doing what we what we doing and keeping it pushing forward. So it don't really affect me like that now. You know, everything just kind of moves smooth. So tell us about what type of music, what, what genre would you put yourself in music-wise? Well, I, I, you know, I put myself in hip hop because that's where I started. 
But, you know, I can I can damn near cross into all type of genres. You know, it really don't don't matter. But hip hop, because I love it so much and I, I know the history behind it. And you know, hip hop is, is as old as I am. I grew up with it. So that's 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 what I categorize myself in, that's what I put myself in. I agree, cause you know, you know us, you know us, our people. We we do it all, so we can't really. <laughs> put, you can't put you can't put our people in one box. So we we a little bit of everywhere. Do you have a favorite song of yours that yeah. you like every time you play? Like, yeah, this the one. Like, well, okay, let me let me ask you this question. You mean like a favorite song that I done made or? A favorite song that you've made, yes. And when you made it, you were like, "Yeah, this my." Well, um, I got this 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 song called "These Days." That, you know, what I'm saying I just recorded that. That's my that's my new favorite. I don't know, it might get might get old and more here. But other than that, it's a song I got called uh, "Retarded." My group I had called uh, Certified Grand. And that song right there, like every everybody on the song, we just went in the studio, went out the head, just put the beat on and just vibed out. So because because of that reason alone, like the vibe that we had on that on that song, that's one of my favorite ones. So you said y'all just went in the studio. So is that your when you write music, do you just go and go and record or do you write it down or do you and then go in the booth? Well, um, Something, it, it, it depends. It really depends on like how I feel because let's say if I'm already in the studio, somebody, you know what I'm saying, crank up a beat or something like that, and I'm feeling the way that the uh, that the beat is hitting me, I just go in there and just spit it right on out like without any, any type of pen, any type of pad. I don't do no punch-ins, no nothing. I just go in there and spit it right out. But if it's something that I need to, you know, put more thought in, or if the song is more thought provoking, then that's when I sit down and I just write everything down because I don't want to, you know, what I'm saying I don't want it to be no mess, and I want people to understand clearly what I'm saying. Like that, that's even where my name come from, Clear J, because everybody used to say that when I spit, it's come out like very clearly and very fluid, and that's because you know, what I'm saying. The songs that I write sometimes it'd be real like deep. So I have to I have to write them songs down. And really put thought into them. Everything else I just go in there and just spit it out. That's dope. That's dope. Um so we know you don't do just music. Tell us about your businesses. Okay, so <laughs> so this is where you know I just I just kinda have a little fun with it. Because I got a uh, uh, furniture assembly business, TV, a TV mountain business. I do, and uh, that that you know is very successful. That, that's really uh, been keeping me afloat through the pandemic, all that. Um, I also do graphic design, and uh, I have a website by the name of uh, MakeItReal.com where you can find the uh, graphic designs that I do. Um, I, I had a podcast. I shut it down for a little bit, but I'm gonna bring it back. But it was successful. Uh, it was called Indie Grind Plus, and that was like an extension to Mike Hustling, where I promoted independent artists and, and uh, stuff like that. Um, let me think. Uh, it, it, it's it's a lot. It's a lot that I, that I do. Like uh, me and my bro, we shoot movies and stuff like that. Saying we, uh, you know, with my uh, nephews and all that, we shoot movies. We got a movie that's uh, coming up here in the next year or so. We're trying to put everything together and write the script and get everything right before uh, we put the movie out. If you want to see one of uh, the past movies that my bro did, it's called uh, The Herb Train. You can go to theherbtrain.com and check out the movie there, or you can go on uh, Amazon Prime and check the movie out. Um, I mean, it's yeah, it's it's a lot more that I'm gonna be working on in the future, but that's that's just a few that I'm like very proud of and are very successful right now. And the things that have been keeping me afloat, like uh, tremendously during this pandemic. I know that's right, cause whew, 
Yeah. It's been mm, the world is just boy. <laughs> it, it, been, it been tough out here, man. Like <laughs> I, I don't understand, like um, you know, like how so many people didn't see this coming. Though I'm, I'm, I'm gonna say that because me personally, I saw I saw it coming from a mile away. I saw it, you know, saying even with the, the, the transition of the internet and how uh, stuff was. Coming more and more different by the day, by by the by the hour, damn near. So you know, I kind of I kind of saw that it was it was something coming down the line that was gonna shut everything down, and people was gonna have to learn how to survive just using the internet. And I was like, I don't know what it is, but I kept telling folks, I said, man, it, it, it's something about to hit. Like, I don't know, they got this shit planned. I don't know <laughs> if. Yeah. Uh, if you know what I'm saying, if, if this is just, you know, whatever, but it's something coming. I said, y'all need to get ready. I said, the internet shit finna take over. Y'all need to get ready, but wasn't well, nobody listening like that. <laughs> they never listen to us too late. A lot of people, man, it's sad because yeah. a lot of people be calling stuff and everybody like, no, you you always crazy until it right. happened. Right. You always I'm talking crazy. about you on some conspiracy spirit shit. I'm like, come on, look, look. You got over the eyes. <laughs> right. <laughs> Brainwashing. That's a whole nother. I could do a whole episode on that. Mm, right. Listen. Right. But, I join you on that one because like, it, it, it's so much out here that, you know, people are brainwashed by. And, you know, even even with the, you know, and I know this this show is on Spotify, but I like Spotify for podcasts and I do not like Spotify for artists. I'm gonna say that I'm gonna put that on record. I don't like Spotify for artists. I don't like Apple for artists. Why? And, and the main reason is because they're not paying the artists enough. Like you putting in all this work, building your studio, mixing and mastering your music, uh, writing your music, recording your music, trying to promote it and get it out to, to, to the people, and they paying you less than a cent. Like that shit don't make sense to me. Now, it may not make sense to me because of the, you know the era I came from. Like I like I just said, just selling off the street from from the age ten to eighteen, we made sixty thousand dollars. So maybe it don't make sense because of that. But even today, it's different ways that you can hustle and get your own money and get it. You know, what I'm saying just as quick. Besides going and putting your stuff on Spotify, where you in the, you in line with a whole bunch of competition. It's just not not. You that's on this particular site and people trying to, you know what I'm saying, reach out to you got a shit ton of competition and, and a shit ton of other artists out there that's trying to do the very, the very same thing that you do. So how you gonna make yourself stand out? Yeah. Hey. Hey, I can't argue with you when you write. Listen, I can't argue with you. Hey. But but for podcasting, I got I, I could be I could be honest about that for podcasting. I love it. Because you know what I'm saying, I believe that this, this you know, Spotify, Anchor, Apple, Spreaker, um, it, it's a it's a ton more out there. Like they perfect for, you know, podcasts, iHeartRadio, perfect for podcasts because you know what I'm saying, it gives the opportunity for the podcaster to get in front of the people. Get into right. you know what I'm saying the, the, the listeners' ears. You see right. what I'm saying? Because so many people are gonna search for podcasts and like if you if you on topic with what's going on or if you got a topic that people are interested in, they're gonna find your stuff like that. You see what right. I'm saying? With one search. So I think it's perfect for that. But you know, for, for just the artists, I think I think they need to come up with another hustle. Well, I'm not an artist, so I won't speak to that, but I can agree with the podcast. <laughs> right, right. But right. since you're from Georgia, right, right. I wanted I wanted to ask you, what is your cause it, it was it was the question that, you know, I have this group for my podcast and we were all talking about the song that Omaretta put put out about mm-hmm. that's not sorry, not sorry. So what do you how do you feel about what she said about What's not Atlanta and what is Atlanta? Man. She going, <laughs> she going, she going by address. That's all. That's all she going by. She going by address. Because even if you look at the video, she at the, uh, she at the Bray Stadium. The Bray Stadium is in Cobb County. That's not Atlanta. <laughs> See what I'm saying? But just because 
Cobb County, that, that particular site got an Atlanta address. That's why she was there. You see what I'm saying? But if you go 10 minutes to the west, you in Smyrna, Georgia. You go 10 minutes to the north, you in Marietta. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? So, so basically, they just added that as an address to, to say Atlanta. So now you got different spots throughout the city that, you know what I'm saying, got an, an Atlanta address, but that's the only way that they signify being Atlanta. They might still be in zone six, which is, you know what I'm saying, the Cato Old Note to Lithonia. They might still be, you know what I'm saying, in zone three, which, you know, that, that's the Swats area, stuff like that. They might still be in, in, in College Park area. It might still be, in, you know what I'm saying, in Jones World South, but they, they got an Atlanta address. Like we don't we don't go by just the address. We go by the zones. You see what I'm saying? So if you outside the certain zone, if y'all know what the zones is in Atlanta, it ain't nothing but the you know what I'm saying, precincts. So if you go outside of a certain zone that the police don't go, you know what I'm saying, out of or don't go into, then you outside of Atlanta. So like going going to Gwinnett County where uh the Migos from. Gwinnett County is not Atlanta. You know what I'm saying? Oh, so she wasn't lying when she said the Migos wasn't Atlanta. Right, okay. right, right, right. Gwinnett County is not Atlanta. You see what I'm saying? Uh, if you go in like Super South, you talking about going to uh, Spalding County and stuff like that, that's not Atlanta. You talking about going to, you know what I'm saying, the, the Douglas County, that's not Atlanta. Those people, they claim Atlanta. You, you talking about going to Rockdale, that's not Atlanta. They well, claim you know, it they close. They was asking my opinion, but I'm from Florida and I live in Ohio, <laughs> so I ain't nobody to be telling nobody what's not Atlanta. So, right, right. <laughs> so I'm like, well, wait, let me see, like, let me see what the you know my guests who from Atlanta think. Cause right, right. I'm, ain't nobody, cause you know how the internet, like, you not even yeah, from so Atlanta. Not, what yeah, you they're, mean? They're playing you about that shit. <laughs> so I, ain't, I know y'all do not play, like. Right, right. So, so, but I listen. Why don't you go ahead so mm -hmm. everybody know where to find you at? You know your socials, your links, anywhere your music is at, your websites. Go ahead and let you know. Let's talk about it. Know so they know where to find you at. Hey, look, y'all can check me out at www.clearjofficial.com. Clear J is spelled with a K, not with a C. Did that on purpose. So that, you know what I'm saying, to, to signify the difference in between me, K-L-E-A-R-J-O-F-F-I-C-I-A-L. Now, you can also find me on Instagram, same name. You can find me on Facebook, same name, the J Official. Uh, where else I'm at? You can find me on BandLab, same name. You can find me on AudioMax, same name. You can find me on Spotify, same name. So, you know what I'm saying? Every, everywhere you go is Clear J Official. So, even if you just Google it, Clear J Official, everything gonna come up. So, you know what I'm saying? That's how we rock it. Y'all, and I'm about to go ahead on and play one of his songs so y'all can, y'all know who we, you know, we just got talk, done talking to. You can hear, you know, all the music we've been talking about. And I'm gonna go ahead and let y'all, y'all let me know what y'all think. And I'll see y'all next week. Hey.